Shalom Aleichem, Assalamu Alaikum, welcome to First Chronicles chapter 4, aka Paralipomenon, in which there are 43 verses. Beginning in verse 2, we see the term Arathites versus Zorathites. Verse 4, Beth Alain, Beth Alain, or Beth Alain. Versus Bethlehem. Okay, uh, verse 9. There's a lot of different names being used, different spelling, but Igabes versus Jabez. Um, that's with a Z. And we have famous, more famous than his brethren versus more honorable. Verse 10, coasts versus coast. So really bless him, not just one coast. That thou wouldest make me know that thou wilt not grieve me. So he's asking Elohim, he's asking Hashem, let me know that you will not grieve me. Versus that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. Is that a realistic ask? Personally, I don't think so. What kind of a life would you live if God would keep you from evil in the sense that it would not even grieve him? It wouldn't cause him stress or pain or strife or vex him. That is not... Has anyone had that type of life? I don't think so. Realistically, is this... Is this a reasonable ask? Elohim, Hashem, would you make me know that you will not grieve me? You will not grieve me. Yeah, he's a good father. Merciful, gracious, kind. Yeah, that's a reasonable ask. It's within his power to do. The Masoretic, what, what he's asking there, not so much. Verse 12, Taman versus Tahina. Sounds like something you put in... Uh, Shawarma, Tahini. The founder of the city of Nahash versus the father of Ir Nahash, which means city of a serpent. And quite frankly, it means the same thing. There's an omission of the brother of Esalam, the Kenizzite. Verse 14, the father of Agadir versus the father of of the valley of Kharashim. Kharashim. Verse 17, our first significant difference of this chapter, it says, Jether begot Maron. So Jether is a male, that's the father. But it says here, she bare Miriam. So it is saying, Jalon is a woman, or Jethro is a woman. I'm not sure who is the woman, but just identifying whoever the individual is as a she, not a he. Verse 18. That is Adia versus Yehudiya or Jehudija. Verse 20. The son of Bana and Enon. And the sons of Se, Zoan, and the sons of Zoab, versus Ben Hanan. Look how wildly different these names are. Ben Hanan versus Fana, and Tilon, and the sons of Ishi, were Zoheth and Ben Zoheth. Actually, at one point I did like this name, but it's actually Zoan, but perhaps it is Zoheth in the Hebrew. Let's look this up and see what it actually means. It means releasing, a son of Ishi. So it means releasing, Zoheth. I do like names with the, word, the letter Z in them. On a side note, uh, 21. And the offspring of the family of Ephrath, Ephrathabak. and the offspring of the family of Ephrathabak, versus and the families of the house 
of them that wrought fine linen. That just might be a English translation of Ephrathah Bach. I could be wrong, but perhaps that's what it is. Verse 22. Dwelt in Moab versus had the dominion. So it's one thing to rule over Moab and be dominant. Subjugate other people in Moab versus to live there. Just be a citizen. Big difference. It says, and he changed their names to Abederin and Athukim. Whose names did he change? Jehoiakim and the Mev Chozeba and Joash and Saraf who dwelt in Moab. And he, it sounds like jo Jehoiakim, changed their names to Abederin and Athukim. So who whose names did he change? Probably Joash and Saraf. Sounds like those are their individuals. Chozeba seems to be the men. But if we look at the Masoretic, what does it say? Why is it there's such a big difference? Okay, it says, Joachim and the men of Chozeba, Joash, Saraf, who had the dominion in Moab, and Jashubilihem, Jashubilihem, or Yashubilihem. And these are ancient things. What does that even mean? That is nonsensical. It doesn't mean anything. It sounds like word salad. Doesn't make any sense. So let's leave it at that. Verse 23. Who dwelt in Ataim and Gadira with the king and dwelt there. Uh, they grew strong in his kingdom and dwelt there. Verses and those that dwelt among plants and hedges, there they dwelt with the king. Okay, um, doesn't mention that they grew strong in his kingdom. But it does say they grew strong in his kingdom in the Septuagint, the Masoretic, it says they dwelt with the king. What, to get strong? No, it says for his work. So it's not agreeing with the Septuagint. Okay, so verse 31 now says here, these were their cities until the time of King David, or David. Verses, and at Sharaim, and at Sharaim, these were their cities unto the reign of David. Verse 33, this was their possession and their distribution versus these were their habitations, which can also mean dwelling or seat, and their genealogy, which can also mean registration or enrollment. Verse 36, a notable name here, Ishmael versus Jesse Miel. 38, and they increased abundantly in their father's households, verses, and the house of their fathers increased greatly. So it's one thing where individuals benefited and increased, but it, it's another thing completely altogether when your father's house as a whole is benefiting as a collective. Okay, uh, verse 39, an addition of Entrance, and then it says I or Guy versus of the valley, which seems to be a translation. Verse 41, a direct translation. The people's houses, so they smote the people's houses versus they smote their tents. And it describes the Menaeans, a specific people group, versus habitations. What does habitations mean? Let's look that up. Maui and habitation, refuge. Okay, so it can mean... Uh, what is the word they use, though? Is that Menean? I really missed that. The word is Maon, Mawin. All right, let's carry on. 41 mentions... Place. They dwelt in their place, so in their stead. 
versus in their bedrooms. That, that is one way people could read that. Just want to clear that up. It doesn't mean their bedrooms. It means in their place. Rooms means in their stead. It's not talking about physical structural rooms in a house in either translation. Verse 42, rulers versus captains. Verse 43, that were left of Amalek versus the rest uh, of the Amalekites that were escaped. Okay. And then an, an addition of and dwelt there. So that's all for this chapter. Thank you very much for your time. Till next time, I bid you all Shalom Alechem, Assalamu Alaikum, Irini Mazisu, Pax Wobiskam, peace be unto you, and Maranatha.